Have you ever considered why we round the way we do? You know, you probably remember the trick or the rhyme: five or higher round up, four or lower stays the same. But what does stay the same even mean? Round higher, higher what? It doesn't make any sense, right? This video is going to look at a very conceptual way to explain rounding. We're going to do that using base 10 blocks. So let's first take a look on the number line. Let's say we're rounding the number 63 to the nearest 10. I want you to imagine a scenario where you owe me $63. You borrowed it to buy a really expensive shirt. This is out of my price range, but you get the picture. So you show up at my house and you owe me $63 and you say, I only have $10 bills. I'm rounding to the nearest 10, which tells me that you only have $10 bills. You didn't bring any ones. I'm like, ugh, this is so like you to not show up with exact change, but have no fear, we're gonna round. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a number line, but we're going to hop or jump on the number line 10. And I have to think about what are the two tens that this is between. And if you build the number 63 with your base 10 blocks, you can see that you've got six rods and three cubes, right? Or six tens and three ones. So I'm thinking that you could show up at my house with either $60 or six tens, or you could show up with $70. Those are your two options, okay? Now, since this is, this is a number line, let's put what's in the very middle. So between 60 and 70 would be 65. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that just like that. That's the halfway point. Now, I've given the number 63, and I need to see which side would it be on. Now, I could put my little tick marks, but I'm just sort of estimating at this point. So I know that 63 is gonna go on the left side here, or this side of it. So I'm gonna put 63 there. And now I can see, I can ask myself the question, is 63 closer actually physically on the number line to 60 or to 70? Well, it's super easy to see that it's closer to 60. Okay, cool, let's try another one. Now you can see I've got round 78 to the nearest 10. Again, you borrowed $78 from me. You show up at my house. Let's draw a number line showing what are the two options you can show up at my house with. So you can show up with $70 or $80. Again, I can make my middle mark here and know that that is 75. I'm going to plot 78. Is it gonna go on this side or this side? It's gonna go on this side maybe right about there. And now I can ask myself, is it closer, is 78 closer to 70 or closer to 80? Again, I can see it's closer to 80. Now you might be thinking, okay, but what if I change this and it's no longer 78, but now it's 75. Now what do I do? Well, that's a good question because technically, if I put 75 on here, it's equidistant from 70 and 80, right? We've got a problem. Well, it turns out that just like in order of operations where mathematicians around the world agree to do certain operations in a certain order, the same goes with rounding. So there's this rule that if it falls in the middle, we're gonna go ahead and round up, which is why we get the rule five or higher round up, four or lower stays the same. And the problem with just teaching children those rules is that they don't see the conceptual point in this. And when we get to decimals and we're rounding to tenths and hundredths, it really becomes a problem. This is a great strategy to allow children to make their own rules. After they do this a certain number of times, they're gonna be able to come up with that on their own. And that is better for putting it into their long-term memory and really making sure they understand. That's how you round using a number line and you can use your base 10 blocks to prove that. I hope you found this video helpful.